All right guys, hope you're ready for this. This video is probably gonna go a little bit longer than typical because this is a very cool watch. I've been wanting to see one of these and uh, it never got sent to me from the brand. This one actually was sent in by an owner. So my buddy Jerry actually went on a bit of an ocean crawler buying spree. And this was one of the pickups he did. This was the ocean crawler Paladino and this is the orange variant. Now they all come, all the colorways of this model do come with the orange body. Now this is aluminum and they all have the anodized orange body and then they're going to have different colorways in different hands and everything like that. So this one's orange, but it's, you know, it's uh, more of a burnt orange. It's definitely playful and there's also blue, silver, green and black colorways. So, uh, but big thanks to Jerry for sending this in and also picking up the orange one. It's kind of my jam. Um, real quick look, this is the box. So it looks like Ocean Crawler mixes it up a little bit with their packaging. So this is the first time I've been exposed to this box. Usually it's a, you know, more of a fabric color covered uh, material type box. But this one's kind of a wood grain and uh, just pretty simple, but nice nonetheless. It's better than, you know, just like a little cardboard thing or something. If you're into the presentation, which, you know, it's a thousand dollar watch. This is a $999 watch. If you get them on their pre-order, I think it might have been like $799 or something. I'm not sure. So you can get them cheaper, but you have to be willing to like get in on that when it pops up. So let's get right into this guy and we'll talk about the case size. It is, uh, I measure 43.1 millimeter on the uh, case. Let me double check that real quick because I thought they said, yeah, see, 43.1. I don't know. It's a 43 millimeter watch. Uh, lug to lug is a 50 and a half millimeter. And then thickness is a little on the thick side, about 15 and a half. That's capturing some of the double dome sapphire crystal with AR coating on the underside. 22 millimeter lug width. So you have overall a great size watch. I have been tending, you know, to wear a little bit larger watches. You know, the Omega here is a 42 by 50. So this being a 43 by 50, essentially, is definitely my wheelhouse. And it'll work on most wrist size, you know, six and three quarter and up easily. You should be able to pull it off, especially with the offset crowns. So you can see it's a compressor style case here. So you have, this is your inner rotating uh, crown and then this is your time setting and hacking crown and then over here on this side of the case you have a helium escape valve and that's because these are rated to they on the dial wrote 2,000 feet which is 600 meters the thing with ocean crawler is um, they don't just spec them so they don't you know to meet those requirements you use certain gaskets uh, four millimeter thick uh, sapphire crystal helium escape valve you do certain things to meet those requirements well, Ocean Crawler test each watch. So each when you go buy a watch, it's actually been tested to the 2,000 foot depth rating, you know, with machinery. They don't take it down 2,000 feet. Nobody goes 2,000 feet. They also use a Salida SW200 movement, and they regulate it. I threw this thing on the time graph for a second ago, a minute ago, whatever. This thing is flatline. And I love seeing that when I throw a watch on there, and when they claim it's regulated, sometimes, yeah. There's some deviation, which, you know, it still can be regulated and still have some deviation plus or minus, but it's always nice when I put it on a time grapher and it's a flat line. It's just so cool. So Jerry sent it over on the leather strap. So this one, I believe, comes with all three of these straps. So, so it should come with this leather. It'll come with this silicone rubberish type one. It's got a little bit of uh, flexible stretchiness to it, and it's also fitted to the case, and it comes with a... Uh, deploy buckle here that's all nice and smoothed out and then it'll come with a color matching NATO strap as well so and again like I said this video is going to go long and that's because I want to clip I want to cut into the video here you know I want to show it on each one of those straps I typically don't do that and I want to do that because you guys you know maybe you want to see that maybe you're spending a thousand dollars on one of these or buying it used in the you know seven hundred dollar range and you just you want to see what it looks like on the other strap so Hopefully I can do that for you. So let me put this on my wrist real quick. Uh, I gotta tell you, on the leather, I know that's like, oh, a leather on a diver, how dare you? Well, I'm not diving, so I'm not underwater, so I can wear it on a leather strap. And it feels perfect on a leather strap on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. It feels perfect. I love the separation 
from the stainless steel case that it looks like it's just hovering over and then uh, docking with the aluminum round, um, you know, basically movement holder side of the case. Um, I just love that look. You, do, you don't see that. I'm sure there's other watches out there that use this assembly process, but you just don't see it often. And it's really cool because it gives it a very three-dimensional look, um, especially when you're doing non-fitted straps. Now, when you put the fitted strap on there, you're going to lose that or the NATO. But when you're doing a two-piece strap like this, you get to see it all the way around. So it just adds a, a little more depth to it. So you can see both crowns are signed and loomed. And then the, the inner rotating chapter one actually has a small ring of anodized aluminum in it to color match the inner rotating bezel, which when we unscrew this, you get a nice pop to it and it immediately engages the uh, gears for the rotating bezel. Very smooth, like no play in it. Um, there's no indentation, so you don't feel like notches or anything, but uh, you're going to be able to line this up easily. Now, I did have someone point out something I didn't really think about it. So, and I don't dive, again, so I don't know if this is something that divers would do. And you guys are going to be able to answer this for me because I'm sure some of you dive. Changing your dive time underwater. Is that something you guys do with like a rotating bezel? Um, because, you know, when this is unscrewed, you basically lose your water resistance, right? I think, unless maybe they don't. But if you do, then you're not going to be able to adjust your timing underwater. But maybe that's not a thing. I don't know. You guys tell me. I don't go underwater with these. Um, and if I did, I'm not going to need to adjust time. Uh, because the things I time, I'm certainly not going to be doing underwater. So here's some close-ups of it. They are only making or have only made 300 of these. And you can see that they're actually numbered right in the case back here. This is number five of 300. So very, very cool. And I could be wrong, but I don't think it's 300 of each color. I think it's 300 total. And again, I could be wrong on that. But if you look on this, you can see that's kind of a metallic dial. I'm assuming it's metal and then it's colored. I could be wrong on that, but it's also, you know, cut out for the indices. So it's a um, sandwich dial, right? And then you have a small reveal of that sandwich dial around the date cutout, and the date wheels matched to the dial color perfectly. I love all the matching. Even the rotating bezel, it looks like it's metal as well and color matched perfectly. So you're going to get some different light refractions, which maybe looks, you know, like it's a different color, but... When you really look at it, it's all matching. And they use seven layers of C3 Super Luminova. So you're going to get insane loom on this. And I will do, at the very end, I will do the loom shot. So uh, now I'll do the, the uh, strap change. So here it is on the fitted rubber straps. Now there's two different, I didn't show it, but they're, part of the reason why they didn't do drilled lugs on this guy is because there's two different holes in the inner K, in the inner lugs for the fitted strap. So the, the holes closest to the case are what you're going to use for the fitted strap to get it to fit really tight against the case, like you can see here. And there's also two different, there's a couple different ways you can configure this. You can see there's keepers on here, but they're not needed when you're using the buckle, which you're going to want to use the buckle. The buckle is the nice way to use it. Plus, um, it just, it's nicer. I don't know. So you can remove these, you know, before you put it on the watch head. Um, but these are keepers for if you're going to put on, say, like the buckle off from um, the leather or something, then you could uh, use those. But I don't know why you would. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you, yeah, I don't know if you even can because it's not trimmed out for the tang. So I really don't know why the keepers are on there. You don't need them because, as you can see, the flap goes on the bottom side. So I don't know. Yeah. So you would just go like that. I don't, you don't need those. So that's a nice clean look. All right. And then lastly, I'm going to show it on the NATO, which is personally my least favorite way to wear, but uh, everybody has their own preference. And I just wanted to show those are the double holes for the spring bars. As you can see, I put it in the one furthest out. So I should be able to get good clearance on whatever NATO you're going to use, whether it's going to be this one that's provided or whatever one you want to pick after the case. So, you know, I have been wearing like uh, Erica's original, so this watch would be awesome on one of those. 
So as, as long as uh, you use those outer holes, it should be fine. So there it is. That's what it looks like off the wrist, which is um, nice. I like the way NATOs look, but you guys know I just I don't wear NATOs. Um, but I will do it. I will put this on a NATO just for you guys. So you can see there, adds a little bit of width to it. I mean, but you guys that are NATO fans kind of know that it adds a little bit of height, a little bit of width and everything like that. But it is a nice, comfortable way to wear these watches in the summertime. I get it. Um, personally, I think they look great. I just don't like to wear them. But there it is on NATO. And uh, let me close you guys out with a loom shot. I'll keep it on the NATO because I'm already doing editing. Splicing things together, and I don't like to do that. So um, get ready for some killer loom. Let me clean it up a little bit. Hope you guys aren't playing a drinking game. Okay, there is the loom. It is phenomenal, as you would expect, with seven layers of C3. So you have huge real estate in that sandwich dial cutouts, the handset, and of course it's loomed on the inner rotating bezel as well, and the crowns. Always a little trick. I like that. And cleanly done. You can actually see it's the uh, Ocean Crawler logo on there. You can see the lines of separation if, if it would focus, but... Um, it's hard to do sometimes in the dark with the loom. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Big thanks to Jerry for uh, sending this in. Also, Jerry is the 3D print buddy of mine that makes these toys in the background. I'll put a link to his Etsy store in the description if you're interested in having these fun toys on your watch desk. That's where you get them. I'll see you in the next vid, guys.